I've been meaning to do this project for oh, 12 months, probably more, I don't know, is to build or do a DIY 12 volt battery. Uh, people have asked, so I thought I'd do one. Um, I've designed the casing there and there. It's going to be a Samsung 25Rs. It's going to have you can either have a BMS, as in that one, which I can't stand them because I don't know what it's doing. If it had Bluetooth, it might be different, but these are the cheapest BMSs you can buy at a couple of three quid or something like that. Or it can have an active balancer, which I prefer because you don't lose power. Those things, what they do is, if you get one cell really low, it brings the rest of them down to it. This one makes them all even by transferring power between the, the, the three cells. This is actually a 4S, but you can actually use it for a 3S anyway. I'm not using that, although this is designed for it. If you want to use one of these, which way does it go? That way. That slots in there, and then that goes on the top. And that holds that in place like that. But I'm not going to be wiring that up. All the all the, the holes and everything else are all made. And so as you put that in there, and then you solder the cells, you solder the BMS through there. Now this was built, uh, all the measurements and everything else were taken for Samsung 25 hours. You might find that some cells are very slightly thicker depending what heat shrink they've used on them. But these fit perfectly in here. And they all go the same way. So I'm going to populate this and then I'll come back. The next thing I've got to do is clean my table. I've got a burn on my table there, look, I'm not happy. The next thing I've got to do is put the top on. Now, if you're putting the BMS in, the BMS has got to go in, then the top. And the BMS, as I've just shown you, uh, there's your output, so the power goes to the top. So that goes in there like that. Anyway, I'm not doing it that. I might do another one with the BMS in there. It just shows as so as I can show you. So to get the top on, I mean, it's not going to be very easy. I should have actually chamfered these a bit. That might have made it a bit easier. But you put it on and you wiggle it round. And that goes on there like that. Uh, it's up to you what you do with that. You could, because it's it is loose, just a blob of super glue in there will just hold that perfectly. But like I say, these were done with these Samsung 25Rs in mind, so everything fits nice and tightly. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, your power switch. It's up to you which way you actually put it. Mine's going like that. Uh, the battery indicator, the voltage indicator, incidentally with these things you've got to be bloody careful. These wires, what we've got here is a positive and a negative and a sense. Uh, so these go to your power source which can be whatever you want and these go to this goes to the sense. Now those can be linked together, it doesn't really matter. But check the wiring on that. Uh, those, there was a straight strand of wire and it was actually touching on the positive. So th this is just so you can power it from one source and you can measure something else. That's all. That's got to go in there. Like that, which can be held in with glue again. And then the BMS. And then it's finished. See you later. The BMS, this one, it does actually slot in and fit there. Now this got LEDs on it. I like LEDs because it gives you an indication, an indication of what's happening. Anyway, I think the first thing I've got to do before I put them in, sorry, is spot weld this up. Now what you've got to remember is uh, your positive and your negative. 
The reason why I've put all these options is so as you can actually do either way, you can do the positives up, the positives down, it doesn't really matter. So, but it does with the BMS. If you fit the BMS, they have to be a specific way. I'm going to spot weld these up. For that, I need my spot welder. Here's my spot welder. I'm going to be using basic tools. I'm going to be using stuff that you can readily, cheaply buy. This is from Banggood. Uh, apparently, it's 99.9% .9 nickel, which are probably it's probably about 20% nickel. It's probably nickel coated tin. I'll leave a link in the description for all the parts that I've got here. They all came from Banggood. The links are going to be affiliate links, you know, so I'll, I'll probably get a couple of pence off every sale. And I'll find out if this is proper nickel. It don't look it to me. The way you can tell is when you spot weld, if it gives a spark off, it isn't proper nickel. It's tin co it's it's nickel coated tin. I'm gonna wire it as per the BMS, as though I'm using the BMS. So the BMS, although the power connector's at the bottom, the power connector goes at the top to give you enough room to put the wires down. Um, so if the BMS was to go there, that's negative. So you have to make sure that your negatives are at the bottom and then you put a, a series link across the top and then you put another series link across that one there to there and then that will give you 8.4 volts would it? Yes and then at the top here will be 12.6 volts so as you look at it from there like that you need to put the two positives on the outside now the first spot weld I'm going to do, as per the BMS, um, is across here. So I need to put a wire, a wire, <laughs> a link across there. So I'm going to do the series links across those, and then I'll do a series link across those. That will give me the the the, the three S pack, and then I'll come back. Well, I'm not used to working with nickel this thin. <laughs> <laughs> this is point. I think it's point one mil by eight mil. Oh, it's ridiculously thin. Anyway, when you first cut one, when you cut one off, measure measure the distance, measure the the length of it. Sorry, uh, make sure it's hundred percent, and then use that as a pattern. Put a mark on it or do something. And then what I do is you put that one up against there. What do we do it on the top? We do it on the top. I'm left handed so yours will vary. And then you get your scissors and you can just push push your scissors up against it like that. And then you cut your next one. And then you take the top one and you use it as your pattern for the next one. So you cut loads of those and they're all exactly the same length. I've said it before, I'll say it again. When you're soldering these things, make sure you put the opposing end to it, uh, or you know, the op opposite female, male, whatever. Uh, because it keeps the pins in line. If I was to solder it like that, it melts the plastic and the pins go out of shape. Not out of shape, out of position. So put that in there and it keeps it all in line. Now also, when you're soldering, a good tip, if you need to solder that on the bench, all you do is you move the pins around to whichever position that you want. So like that, I'm going to put the, the wires obviously one in there and one in there and then it makes it a lot easier rather than trying to mess around you know what I mean so have them like that put it on the bench and then you can solder it direct like that I'm, I'm, I'm shaking you've scared the shit out of me Chloe's just walked around the bloody corner right round the side of a wall and went morning in me face well said hi I don't know what she said she said hi apparently and then she said, as I jumped through the ceiling and shat myself, she said, oh, sorry, I thought you saw me. Well, yeah, in my face, but how am I supposed to see round the wall? I'm not bloody psychic, you know. Like you women think that men are, or supposed to be. On here, I've got the positive off the power connector, comes out there, and it goes to the center pin on the switch. 
Now obviously your mileage might vary and you need to be careful about where switch positive is and which ones are switched but on this one um, it's the centre that's switched uh, if I switch it that way like that that one becomes uh, connected connected linked switched yes on mine the centre one is the common uh, if I switch it up that one becomes linked and if I switch it down oh, that one becomes linked so I want the top one so what I've done is soldered a piece of nickel onto that which is then going to go onto the positive side of that I can bend that over which I've already cut to an approximate exact length like that and then I can tag I can just um, solder that on parallel you know what I mean and then it's working off the switch and the power output is switched and the negative literally the negative is going to go to the negative there so I'll get another piece which I haven't cut to length yet I'll get another piece and put it up just just above just here and then I'll get this wire and I'll solder it to it or you can put it out there might be a bit easier actually put the wire out there cut it to about the right length um, solder it onto the nickel and then just push it back in when you spot welding there's no correct way of doing it whatever way makes you feel happy uh, the way I do it is put that on there like that and then I start at one end make sure it's all lined up obviously I start at one end of working way across uh, some people use a one of these niddly diddly mag uh, niddly diddly magnets and put that on there to hold it in place you know good idea whatever way makes you happy I've connected the battery connector as going through the switch and then the negative is going to go directly to the battery it doesn't matter whichever way makes you happy if whichever way makes you the happiest f bollocks <laughs> happy happiest happy man I just want you to be happy please be happy <laughs> Smell your miserable f Before I put the final link on, I can't emphasise the importance of this and people actually miss, they, they just don't bother it, they completely skip over it because they know exactly what they're doing, obviously. They've been doing this for years and years and they've got a f***ing clue. Always use a sacrificial wire for your final wiring point. So, what I've got here is the negative. If I switch that off. What I've got here is the negative. Now the negative has got to go to the battery negative. Obviously I've got to link these in parallel but I'll just use one row of cells just to test it make sure it all works okay. So when I put that on there if anything's wrong this wire will set on fire. Wow! <laughs> this wire will set on fire which it doesn't. Now when I turn it on it will set on fire if there's anything wrong which it doesn't so the next thing to do is turn it off put your, put your leads on the output positive negative put the battery lead the sacrificial wire onto the terminal and read the voltage and you should get well virtually nothing and then you switch it on and then you put it on, so we've got 11 volts coming out of that. Always use a sacrificial wire because if anything goes wrong, if you connect that one direct and you've got something wrong, you've got it shorted out, that ain't going to burn out, that switch will burn out first and the fire will happen and squirrels die and everything, so save the squirrels always use a sacrificial wire. Well hopefully if I've done everything right now uh, all the spot welding is now done and I can take the tape off because that's what's holding it all together uh, I've still got to glue that in position so I'll get my meter we've got nothing and then if I flick the switch we have 11 volts coming out of it so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wire uh, the voltage meter thing in uh, that's a piece of piss all you do is you connect I oh, don't keep bloody touching these wires and everything you connect uh, sorry you connect that to negative the black one 
and you connect those two to positive on the battery. That is literally all you need to do. Voltage meter is wired up. What I should have uh, told you is it has to be set to, it has to be wired to the switch. Uh, so as it only actually reads something when the switch is live. So what you do is you get your negative and you put your negative directly to the battery negative and then you get the positive as in the red and the yellow and you connect it to the switch positive so when I turn that on now that comes on and as you can see it's reading a bit low now on the back of all these things or the majority of them um, if I can get something non-metallic to point with <laughs> just here actually let's switch that off uh, just there there's a pot that one there so what you have to do is turn it one way and it increases the voltage or turn it the other way it decreases the voltage so take your reading off there and then adjust it accordingly I'm going to wire the BMS up now now this thing do not let the wires touch the battery terminals when it's plugged in until you've got it all wired up because I've heard reports of these things they just pop those so what you've got to do is nearly plug it in uh, get the negative wire which is the black one and connect it to the battery negative which on this one is there there's the battery negative so you connect that one to that one and then you get the first one which is the green one on this one and then you connect it to the first positive which is that one uh, I mean you could it doesn't matter where you solder it to you could put it in the middle wherever is the easiest to actually solder it then you get the next one which is the yellow one and then you connect that one to that one there there's a noise of that there's a noise of my charger I'm pumping in 3 amps into this cell here or this this parallel bank of cells and I'm discharging at 3 amps this one here with that so I'm charging with that which you can't see and I'm discharging with that purely because I want to drag them down not, not to an extreme but I need to know if the balance is working well I couldn't just leave it bare so I had to cover it in something uh, it's working perfectly now it also has the better the added benefit of it's uh, you can check the voltage of whatever you plug into it so when it's switched off it gives you a readout of the the input voltage so I could pump that up there it is there you go and then if I knock that up to 12 volts come on there you go so if I knock that up to 12 volts and then I turn it on it starts charging you can just about see the light inside the LED flashing and also the solid light there you go and also the solid light to say that it's just um, it's balancing that those two cells again after I've really unbalanced it. As always, thanks for being here. Thanks for all your support. It is greatly appreciated. All the kind comments that people leave. You know, it's 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 quite humbling to think that people watch this shit. When to me, it's just shit and me messing around with batteries and stuff. Um, 